Hi, I'm Bridget Binns. My book is Rotten Kid, A Succulent Story of Survival. It's a memoir. I call the book Rotten Kid because that's what my mother called me all of my life until her deathbed. What's my book about? Well, it's a story of survival. I grew up in Hollywood. My dad was an actor, Edward Binns. He was also an alcoholic and uh, had a bit of a habit of leaving families behind. My mother was a flamboyant, glamorous woman who had a decades-long affair with a prominent California politician who was also my godfather. But it's about survival. It's about fighting to be the person you can be instead of the person that my mother thought I was. I came to write this memoir because I needed to process the things that had happened without ever being a victim. It was terribly important to me not to be a victim. And as you look back on these things, there's really nothing else to do but laugh. Because if you don't, you're going to be crying. I'm going to read you a short segment from my memoir, Rotten Kid. Upstairs on the covered porch that wraps the sprawling Spanish ranch house, a screen door squeaks open. A tall, slim, tousle-haired woman emerges from the bedroom, her filmy white negligee fluttering in the California breeze. Toting a steely-eyed glare and a 22 rifle, she shades her eyes against the sun and the glittering Pacific for a moment to better locate the screeching blue jay that had disturbed her noonday slumber. She lifts the gun to her shoulder, takes careful aim, and blows it to smithereens. The poor blue jay flutters down and hits the dirt, dead. His feathers are the same blue as the ocean. The screen door slams. My mother has gone back to bed. In the scrubby courtyard below, I am one of a bunch of kids surrounding Uncle Clinty Hollister, one of the famed family of early white California settlers and landowners for whom the town of Hollister is named. Uncle Clinty fries a few of the gleaming trout we'd helped him catch early that morning, marveling as he pulled one flapping and wiggling from a creek nearby. I steal a glance at the upturned faces around the fire pit, curious to see if this captive audience has found my mother's performance bizarre or cool. I need a cue for my own reaction, desperate to feel something other than the urge to run far, far away as quickly as possible. At age 11, I don't yet know the meaning of the word eccentric. I'm simply embarrassed to be the child of such a flamboyant person. I have long had trouble parsing some of the events that peppered my privileged childhood. Maybe they were funny. The truth was this. My mother's larger-than-life persona is so overarchingly important to her that my needs are justly inconsequential. It's not worth the effort it takes to stoop down to my level and look even for a moment through my Coke bottle glasses into my confused and needy little soul. I haven't yet learned that her star shines so piercingly bright, the razor sharp wit and glittering repartee, the limpid brown eyes and impish flirtations, that the firmament has room only for her. I am a jagged little unfinished moon lurking hopefully in the shadows. No one was around then to warn me that I mustn't ever allow this woman to see me as a rival. Even if some kind, intuitive person had done so, it would have been akin to telling a loopy little kitten not to compete with a leopard.